Our next and last presenter is very near and dear to my heart because I've had the privilege of working with her for the last nine years. Joanne Coleman from Constellation Brands um, represents some of the biggest and fastest growing beer brands in the country with Corona and Pacifico and Modelo. And today her and Maria Perez are gonna come up and talk about the, some of the amazing things that we've done recently with Modelo. And Modelo is now um, in the nine, it's amazing in the nine years that we've worked together, Modelo has gone from this little brand to being the number two import beer brand in the country just after Corona. Um, recently did some amazing work with Great Big Story. So come on up and let's tell everybody about the creative content that you guys did. So, welcome. Hello, everyone. So, we're real close to you guys being able to get out and vote. I know that's probably a big target for everyone here today, but, um, and ironically, or interestingly enough, some of the content that we're going to be talking about tied into kind of the political climate and, and all that, but um, so we'll, we'll take you through that, so. This isn't working. Oh, there it is. Um, so, Serena set it up a little bit. Um, you know, Modelo is, we have a great group of brands at Constellation, and Modelo is easily our shining star. It's been, I've been with the company for 12 years, and before I was even there, that brand has grown double digit. And even recently, it's double digit growth, um, in, in, which is particularly amazing in, a, in actually a down category. Beer sales are soft, a lot of um, people switching categories, and, and, and it's down, and Modelo easily has been up 10 to 20% year over year. Um, but we found that success had been driven by a core Hispanic consumer. They were drinking a lot of Modelo, which was great for us. We loved it, but we saw a lot of opportunities still to go, go beyond that core Hispanic consumer and reach the more general market consumer. There was still so much upside to be had because we still had very low um, um, numbers when it comes to they were aware of the brand, but when it came to relevancy and, and the like, it just, we were, our numbers were soft, so um, Mandelo needed a big idea. So we talked a bit about earlier in some of the panels how much it's important that it all starts with the consumer. We have this great insights group internally and they were, did a lot of work when it comes to defining the attitudes and, and of, of the consumer. Um, I had to write this down so I was able to articulate it and I didn't leave anything out, but this consumer, our growth target, we knew values hard work. It's an ethos they apply to everything they do. What separates them in this me-centric world is their belief that only people they need to prove, that the only people they need to prove anything to are themselves. They are self-made and they are not afraid to fail. We had this, and if anyone's familiar with our, with our television advertising, you kind of get the idea of it. This, this program was actually in 2016, a couple years ago, so that was somewhat new, but you know, there was, it, we had that above the line TV tying into that fighting spirit support. We just needed something a little bit further that connected to, to the consumer um, beyond TV. Challenges and opportunities. We definitely had limited budgets, and that then for us, we worked with the agencies, or we asked the agencies, how can we, defer the production costs to have the partner produce our spots. We had very limited media budgets. We knew that we needed to kind of maximize those to ensure that we worked with a partner that could provide the scale. And um, very much for this target, we wanted to make sure that we were staying true to our authentic roots and we needed the messaging to be authentic. And that's where we're at. Okay, so as Joanne mentioned, um, the clients really tasked us to really try to identify that big idea. How are we really going to communicate this whole idea of Modelo's um, brand essence and really highlight this whole idea of fighting for better? Um, so um, it's always kind of challenging for us in particular because the creative agency is in Chicago, we're in LA, so we spend a lot of time on the phone together. 
Um, but ultimately, um, following many, many phone calls, um, somebody actually remembered uh, hearing about uh, this place called Garden City through an NPR story. And it really highlighted this teeny tiny town in middle America that was surprisingly very diverse. So the idea really um, came from that one piece that one person heard on NPR. And um, the story really started to build from there. Um, within this very small town in the middle of Kansas live a number of refugees, a lot of immigrants, and then people who were just born and raised within Kansas, so everybody's really kind of fighting for the same thing, like really trying to improve themselves, really fighting for better as a community. So once we kind of really understood what was really happening in the town and how that kind of drew some parallels with what Modelo was trying to do with this whole idea of fighting for better, we needed to identify a media partner that could really allow us to tell the story in an organic way, but also obviously allow us to work in some branding somehow. Um, so, I'm not going to read this whole thing, but um, again, it's really focused on Garden City, this whole idea of, you know, focusing on unity and hard work and coming together as a community. And what we actually ended up doing was um, we ended up partnering with Turner. Um, we identified them as a key partner to really allow us not only produce really quality work, um, but then also um, allowed us to maintain that narrative that the creative agency was already envisioning. The creative agency fell in love with the idea and the people of Garden City so much so that they had actually taken a scouting trip without telling the clients. <laughs> um, because they really wanted to start talking to the people and really started to understand their stories and kind of like where everybody came from and how it was that in this tiny little town in the middle of what we on the coast would think is just like nowhere. Um, they've all just kind of like figured out and they live as a community and everybody's better for it. Um, so um, because of the production that the uh, Turner and CNN team were able to really deliver, we were able to maintain that narrative, really be authentic to the people of Garden City, and we were then able to weave in Modelo um, in a more authentic way. Um, it really allowed us to, um, to really ensure that we were actually going to be able to gain some scale. Um, we actually had to work really hard to sell in Great Big Story to the clients. Nobody had really heard of it. Uh, everybody was thinking complex or thrillist or like what are those like sites that, you know, tell this kind of story. Um, and first we had to sell in Great big story. Um, but at the end of the day, I think everybody really felt that this was the right partner because of those little documentaries that I think a lot of people are now familiar with really allowed us to distribute the content uh, without forcing people to go to some website. Um, it really all lived within social platforms. And because of that, we saw fantastic results. So I'm going to play a quick. Four hours in, in the heart of the nerds for a basket, in the city, are you
All right. So in addition to that long form video, uh, the production team really was able to capture a lot of content and it allowed us to really extend the series over the course of the summer, which is the core season for Modelos. We wanted to make sure that we were continuing to tell that story. Um, and a lot of um, the pieces were really shareable. We saw more comments on this series than we had really on anything that we had done previously. Um, and it really resonated. And as Joanne mentioned previously, this was right before the November 16 election where there was a lot of that divisive talk already. Um, and it was a risk in that this could have easily turned into a somewhat political um, piece. But I think that uh, because we partnered with the right people, it really allowed us to tell the story authentically without really putting any sort of like left-leaning or right-leaning spin on anything. And the best thing was that we got results. So um, we more than doubled the planned delivery. Um, one of the reasons why we continue to actually partner with people like CNN and Garden um, and uh, Great Big Story is because of their distribution methods. Uh, this was a really effective way for us to put the brand in front of people. Um, and despite all of the videos actually being quite lengthy, uh, we did see about a 10% video completion rate, which is pretty good considering that it was a long video, it wasn't a trailer, um, so people don't necessarily consume um, this length of video at those rates. More importantly, we got a lot of really positive comments. Um, again, it could have gone a completely different way, um, but we were just glad that people really saw it as either one, a celebration of different cultures, or um, even people saying, hey, that's where my grandma's from. Thank you for featuring such a tiny little town uh, in such a positive way. And we also won the inaugural um, ARC Award, uh, Best in Show, as well as the Best Nonfiction Series. So um, again, just a testament to um, how well produced this was and how um, well the overall partnership worked. Oh, did you want to take this one? Nope. Sorry, love that one. Um, and then overall, I think I already spoke to this, but I think one of the key things that we also learned is that um, by finding the right partner, we were able to better manage overall resources. Like we came to somebody with the story and they were actually able to help us very effectively tell that story. Um, yes, there was a media investment, but um, to Joanne's um, opening comments, um, we did have a small budget, it worked really hard for us, and overall, um, just working with a publisher who really knew their audience, who really um, appreciated the story that we were trying to tell, um, I think we all walked away with a product that we were all very, very happy with. So what we learned, um, and I, I do wanna say, I, I asked Maria, I, I pulled her in, over the weekend to say please present with me because it was such a collaborative effort between Horizon and then I don't know if we mentioned the creative agency was Ogilvy and they, they really pushed forth this idea. Um, and so some of, the, some of the things we've learned of course, you know, how storytelling can help with consideration and perception, that was our main objective. Um, authenticity and discovery, you know, are, were key for our target and this tied in well with that. And then of course the production capabilities we talked about earlier, complement branding, complement with our branding campaign. It was very much a complement to what we were running on national television. What was a little difficult for us from the client side was the sell-in, internally the sell-in. Um, you know, Ogilvy had done a lot of work to kind of to help us understand Garden City as a market. Um, but you know, it's risk. I'm sure two years ago, you guys all remember the climate. It was, it was very political. The, one of the candidates, who will remain nameless, was talking about Mexico and, and trade agreements and all that other stuff and immigration. And as soon as you know, the internal folks had seen this on our side, as soon as we elevated it, there was absolutely concern. 
Um, luckily, we had a VP on the brand side that was really going to bat for it, saying if we're going to make a steak, we're going to, this is the kind of steak we need to make, we're not going to be political, and we didn't. We made sure that it was more about the hard work you know, and the, and, and the dedication of these people in the market and less about the immigration um, policies. Obviously, that was obvious from the videos themselves, but um, and in the end, we were able to sell it in. Um, but that was tested. This risk that we had was tested. While our campaign was live, three men were accused or were arrested for plotting to blow up an apartment building in Garden City while our campaign, like I said, was live. They were later convicted. I think even recently there was, there's been news about them because they're tying their, their um, actions to our current president. But, um, but yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a test. And, and our partner, Great Big Stories, actually wanted to embrace this and say, let's go ahead and like do a sixth video and let's talk about this and talk about the results in market then afterwards, like how, this, how, the, how Garden City still like persevered. I will say we did not do that. <laughs> we said we could not go any further. We don't want to associate the brand with this, but definitely learning. You know, obviously, in the end, it it, it proved out to be um, to be the right move for us. But we didn't we didn't go any further than this. <laughs> <laughs> they did. They produced it. We just didn't run it. Um, and that's it. So, open up to questions if anyone has any. Yes. Data vendor or data set did you use uh, to identify that core target? Yeah, so that, that was done with our internal insights group. Um, I'm not sure what you know outside company that they use to identify it, but with our portfolio, our beer portfolio at least, we have you know six to eight Mexican beer brands. So our our internal group has done a really good job of helping each brand have its own swim lanes when it comes to target segmentation attitudes, like how can we differentiate a Pacifico target from a Modelo target? So um, I have to give them kudos for that because that was all their work internally. Anybody else? All right, Great. I think that's it. Thank you.